We have to understand everything is going on under some arrangement, just like in the in in the world today in Malaysia. There's a government, and that when they put laws, people have to follow. Just like you had your what was that uh, mass control order MCO? Was it? Yes, Maharaj. Right, you had MCO, right? Mass control yes. order. There was a lot of restrictions. Everyone had to follow. If you didn't follow, you got big trouble. You get arrested. They could take you to jail, fine you, and like that. So in the same way. Just as there's a government in the material world, there's also a universal government. And when we follow the laws of the universal government, then we're taken care of. But when we don't follow the laws of the universal government, then we get problems, we get difficulties. So we are the ones responsible that we bring the troubles on ourselves. We have to be careful. How we act, responsible. So, draw examples from nature of the completeness of this world. We, maybe you could take a minute or two just to sit with a partner or to be with a partner. Or maybe you can just think for yourself. Some examples from nature about the completeness of this world. Were you able to think of any examples after yesterday's class? What about Jolin? Jolin, Mataji, are you there? Yes, I yes, but, uh, uh, so Maharaj. Yes. Can you think of some examples about completeness of this world? Yesterday I was saying that there is uh, sunlight during daytime and uh, darkness during nighttime. Okay. As an example of nature, and then you you mentioned that uh, season, the four seasons in the uh, the four seasons is also complete, where it's meant for farming. Yeah, the, it arranges for the for the production of. The grains, which are so necessary for our subsistence, we can see how the Lord provides for everyone. He provides the food. In order to grow food, of course, we need the, the necessary rain. There has to be a rainy season. And we need also sunlight. And it said also in Bhagavad Gita that the, the vegetables get their juices from the moonlight. So all of these things they're all arranged by the Lord. The rain, the sun, the moon, it's all produced just so that we can pr grow food, to provide enough food to maintain ourselves, our bodies. But people today, they have a different thinking. They think, oh, growing food, no, we'll just go and kill something. People, what, what do they, they like to do? They, they, they think uh, farming means taking care of animals until they're fat and then you kill them and eat them. They th they're thinking like that. They're thinking instead of growing food, they want to just kill some other, unfor some other helpless animals. So this creates of course many problems on, on the planet for all of us. Just like just now people, some, sometimes we hear that the cause of this COVID-19 is due to some uh, reactions which people have done with some animals. We have something from bats or something. Sometimes it's said like that. And so when we go against the gods, the laws of God, and when we try to work in our own way, but not, not giving proper regard for the, the creation of the Lord, then we get problems. But when we work in harmony with the Lord, then there's no problem. Srila Prabhupada explains here, Purnamidam, although the oceans water so much, when there is scarcity of water, you have to take help of Krishna. He'll evaporate the water. He'll, he'll make a cloud. Then when it falls down, then it, it's sweet. 
Otherwise, you cannot touch. Everything is complete. Okay? So we give this example, the rain cloud, salt water, the, uh, the ocean water is salty, but when the rain water comes, that's pure water, you can drink that. So the rain water, very important, Bhagavad Gita Krishna also says, all grains pro are produced by rain, and rain is born by sacrifice, and sacrifice is prescribed duty. Third chapter of Bhagavad Gita, we have to do sacrifice, it's our duty, perform sacrifice. And what is the sacrifice in Kali Yuga? Sankirtan. When we do the chanting, the congregational chanting, then that will bring good rains. One time in India, the people in India were suffering from drought and they wrote to Prabhupada and they asked Prabhupada to donate money to help them for the drought fund. And Prabhupada said, we will come there and do kirtan. So Prabhupada went there with the devotees and they had a big program and they had a big kirtan. And that, that same night there was heavy rain and the drought was finished. So like that, sacrifice produces rain and with rain you can grow grains. Someone said to me, oh, what about the sun? The sun is always there every day, but you need to have rain at the proper time in order to produce the food. Okay, so this is one example. Here's another example. Nature's arrangement. As soon as a child is born, immediately there is profuse milk in the breast of the mother. That is the nature's arrangement. Before birth, the food the child immediately requires, the mother's breast, there is milk supply immediately. Hmm? We, we see when the woman gives birth to a child, then her breast milk begins to flow and she can feed that milk to her child. And of course that's the only thing the child can eat when the child's just born. He needs to, the child needs to have the, the milk from the mother. It's the arrangement of nature. Before the child is born, the mother's milk is not flowing from her breast, but as soon as she gives birth, then the milk begins to flow through her breasts and she can feed her child. Nature's arrangement. Who designed all this? Who arranged these things? It's, there's the personality behind all this, the complete whole, Om, that Supreme Lord who is behind everything. He is the creator. He is the maintainer. Another point is made here. Uh, Thus this phenomenal world is also complete in itself. The 24 elements of which this material universe is a temporary manifestation are arranged to produce everything necessary for the maintenance and subsistence of this universe. 24 elements. You may have been reading Bhagavad Gita yourself, these things are explained there. We begin with the five elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether. These are the five gross elements. Then you have three subtle elements, the mind, the intelligence and the ego. Then you have also the five sense objects, means the sense objects like smell, taste, touch, sight, sound, these are called the sense objects. You have five knowledge acquiring senses. We have the, the eyes, the nose, the tongue, the ears and the skin. And you have five working senses. We have the ability to speak. We have our arms and legs and we have a reproductive organ and an evacuating organ. 
as well as that, there is also consciousness. So this makes up the 24 elements of the material universe. So as stated here, these 24 elements are a temporary manifestation and they're arranged to produce everything necessary for the maintenance of the universe. Our body is also made up of these 24 elements. Everything in this world is like that. So this world is complete in itself. Oh. No other unit in the universe need make an extraneous effort to try to maintain the universe. We just, it's all there, we just have to use what's provided for us. We don't have to create new things, and in fact we cannot. We can only take what's given to us by the arrangement of nature. And who is behind that nature? That is the one Supreme Lord. Another example. To understand human form of life, a complete manifestation of the consciousness of the living being. It is obtained after evolving through 8,400,000 species of life in the cycle of birth and death. So a it's a complete manifestation of the consciousness of the living being. We have full consciousness. We have to make use of that consciousness to understand everything about this life and about who I am, why I'm here. This is the opportunity given by the human form of life. It's a complete manifestation of this consciousness. But often people don't make use of this consciousness. Human life is meant for inquiry and investigation, to understand life, who I am, why I'm here, what's, what's happening, where am I going. We, we should be inquisitive, we should be trying to understand and ask questions like this. But instead, what are people doing? Although they have the human life, although they have consciousness, they, they have only animal consciousness. And instead of making full use of the human consciousness, they just live like animals. The animal is only eating and sleeping and mating and defending. The animal doesn't try to understand any more than that. So, we want to understand the value of the human life. Otherwise, when we don't use the human life, well, then we fall into the lower species of life. We don't go again into different lower species of life, less consciousness. But the human life, we've got the full consciousness. So even though so many complete units emanate from him, he remains the complete balance. Yeah, it's almost inconceivable that, you know, if, if we have a book and we take a page out of the book, then the book is no longer complete. You may have a sheet of paper and you cut the paper into pieces, then it, the, the paper has, it's no longer there. It's, it's made up into little pieces of paper, it's all separated, it's no longer complete. But Krishna's creation is not like that. We give the example, just like you may have a glass of water, 
and you throw the water out, or you may drink it all, but then it fills up again. And you drink it, and then it fills up again. Yeah. That is spiritual nature. Material nature, you have a glass of water, you drink the water, it's empty, finished. Just like your bank account, you have money in the bank, but you go out and you spend it, and you're spending and spending, you don't put any more money in the bank. Maybe you're not working, the company not, not paying you or something like that. Maybe lockdown, no, no pay anymore, just sitting at home all day, but you're spending money. So your bank account is going down and down and down, right? That's, that's material. But here we're speaking about the complete whole, something very different. The complete whole is fully spiritual. He's Purnam. He's Purna. Purna. Complete. We're not Purna. We're incomplete. So, even though so many, th so many complete units are coming from Him, He remains complete. The different universes coming from Mahavishnu, this is the nature of the Supreme Lord. It's not reduced. Prabhupada explains, in the, in the spiritual world, the one is Purna. And if you take the one, the whole one, it is still one. That they cannot understand, the poor brain. They think materially. If the one is complete and if one is taken away, then it becomes zero. So Prabhupada says, what kind of God is only zero? God is not zero. So you see this material, material with, in terms of material science, we think one minus one, zero. But when we're speaking about spiritual science, one minus one equals one. Krishna minus everything still remains Krishna. He's not reduced. He doesn't become zero. These foolish people, they think God becomes zero. They don't understand his spiritual power. What kind of God is only zero? Prabhupada is discussing, you see, in America, Professor Hopkins, big professor in America, Prabhupada is teaching him this knowledge, this science. Even the big professor, he doesn't know this. It's new to him. So Prabhupada said, what kind of God is zero? Sometimes the Buddhists, they say God is zero. They're Shunyavadis. Mayavadis, they say, they say, Brahman Satyam Jagat Mitya. They say this world is false. Only Brahman is real. And they say Brahman is God. Hmm? They say the, this world is not real. We say, no, this world is real. It may be temporary, but it's real. Prabhupada said, if I take my shoes and beat you on the head with it, is it real? Or is it just illusion? Because some people say everything is illusion. The world is not real. All right, so I'll beat you on the head with the shoes. It's all illusion. So if God is only zero, Upanishad said, Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnam Eva Vashishyate. If from the complete you take the complete, the complete remains. Right? If from Krishna you take away the complete, 
Krishna remains. Krishna is the complete. So God never becomes zero. People will think you're mad, right? One minus one equals one. One plus one equals one. What kind of school did you go to? You have to tell them, this is spiritual mathematics. We're talking about spirituality, spiritual science. Materialistic people, they cannot understand. They have to hear. We have to educate them. This is Krishna Consciousness. Our Krishna Consciousness movement is for educating people in the science. This is like, to, just like, what is, the, what is the meaning of the word Upanishad? Who remembers? Upanishad means? Who remembers? Jolene, do you remember? Upanishad means what? I only wrote down Upanishad is the beginning of transcendental life. Yes, okay. That knowledge which brings one closer to the absolute truth or to the personality of God. That's the subtitle of the Ishopanishad, the knowledge which brings us closer to the Supreme Personality of Godhead or to the Absolute Truth. So, we want to give people this knowledge. Remember this Upanishads, how, how did Srila Prabhupada describe the Upanishads? That they are, uh, what is their function in the Vedas? You remember? We spoke about this the last two days. The Upanishads, what are they doing? They're, they're, the Vedas generally are speaking about what? What kind of knowledge they're giving? The Vedas is get generally concerned with? The personal feature of God. No, not at all. Vedas are not concerned, very difficult to understand personal feature of God from the Vedas. Is it the Karmakanda, mostly Karma? Yes, it, the Vedas are generally emphasizing fruitive activities. The karma, they're teaching people how to live a good life according to scriptures. And when you live a good life according to scripture, you follow the laws of God, then you get material prosperity in different ways. Maybe in this life you enjoy prosperity or maybe even in the next life you can be elevated to higher planets. Some, you know, some people like the idea to go to heaven. They think I will enjoy in heaven, I'll live a long life and like this. Some people have this idea to go and enjoy in the higher planets in the universe. So, the Upanishads, however, are the first step in transcendental knowledge. They provide the first step into transcendental knowledge. Transcendental knowledge is not concerned with fruitive activity. It's not concerned in getting some material benefit, right? When we say some fruit of activity, people want to get some material gains. So the Upanishads are not like that. The Upanishads are giving us transcendental knowledge. It's the beginning of transcendental knowledge, however. It's not the complete not the highest thing, but it's the beginning, the first step in transcendence. So, we want to understand that there is a God, He's not zero, He doesn't become zero, even though so many units may come from Him, He remains complete. Krishna expands millions of times, still He's Krishna. Purnam eva vashishyate. Krishna is so full that even Krishna expands millions of times. Still, he's the same thing. Krishna. 
we can see examples of Krishna expanding himself. Just like in Krishna Leela, when Krishna was in Vrindavan, he was going with his cows and the cowherd boys, they would go into the forest. And one day, when Krishna was there with the cows and, the, and his cowherd boyfriends, one day Brahma did a trick on Krishna. And Brahma stole away all the calves and all the cowherd boys who were with Krishna. He stole everything away. So when Lord Krishna, because Lord Krishna knows everything, he understood, oh, this is a trick of Brahma. So what did Krishna do? Krishna took the place. He expanded himself. Now Krishna has many, many cows. Many, many cows. And cowherd boyfriends. There were many cowherd boyfriends with him. And Krishna expanded himself to take their place. So he can, he can expand himself. But he's still the same thing, Krishna. He also expands himself into everyone's heart. He's in the heart of all of us, all, not only the, the humans, but all living entities. Not only that, he's even within the atoms. He's everywhere, in everything. But he's still the same, Krishna. Right? He still remains a person. It's inconceivable. He can be so huge, so great, that as, as Vishnu, so many universes are coming from his body. And he can be so small that he can go into the atom. So, you may say, well, if he's there, why can't we see him? That's a mystery. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes, he said, everything rests on me. Just like beads are strung on a thread. So just like we wear our kunti mala, our neck beads, our tosi beads around our neck, we have beads, you don't see the thread. So the same way Krishna is like the thread, holding all the beads together. So Krishna is everywhere in the universe, holding everything in place. And still he's the same thing, he's Krishna. This is his inconceivable power, his inconceivable opulence. We have to understand there are such things as inconceivable powers. And we will find all of these things in Krishna. He, it's all coming from him. Okay, going ahead. Prabhupada gives another example about completeness. He will eat everything, but everything, but he keeps everything. He doesn't take it away, right? Just like we're offering the food. We make the offerings every day, just, and Krishna eats. Krishna accepts, and he gives it all back to us as prasada. Prabhupada says, just like here, something being offered to Krishna, to God. He will eat it, but he will leave everything for you as prasadam. How? Purnasya purnam adaya purnam eva vasishyate. This is God's power. He will eat everything, but he will keep everything for you as prasadam. Some people doubt, oh, I don't know, you say Krishna eats, I didn't see him eat, look, it's all there. No, he accepts, he accepts, he eats. Just like when you eat food which is not offered to Krishna, then it's very different. It has a different taste, it has a very different effect. It's not the same. But when we offer the food to Krishna, because it's offered to Krishna and because Krishna has accepted the offering, so when we accept the prasada, then we feel the, the effect. We can feel the purification. We feel the satisfaction. We can understand. 
prasadam is really Krishna's mercy, right? How does Krishna eat? Prabhupada said Krishna can eat with his eyes. Each of his senses can perform the activities of other senses. Just like when we sing the Govinda prayers every morning, we sing that verse, huh? that I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, whose trans transcendental body is full of truth, bliss and substantiality. Each of the limbs of his transcendental body possess within himself the full-fledged functions of all the organs and eternally sees, maintains and manifests infinite universes, both spiritual and mundane. So each of his senses perform the activities of the other senses. So he can hear with his eyes. We're very limited. We can only use one sense for one activity. But Krishna is not like that. Because Krishna's body is fully spiritual. Because he's the supreme. He can do anything. He has these inconceivable powers. And one of the powers that he can, he can accept the offerings of his devotees. Right? Are you all offering every day? Are you eating prasadam? Uh, yes, Maharaj. Very good. Yeah, I hope make your offerings, eat prasadam. Certainly it makes a big difference. Eat prasadam. We don't eat prasadam. Very difficult. Prasadam, two things are very important, the holy name and prasadam, the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra and prasadam. These two things, they, can, they will make all the difference to our spiritual life. We have to do the chanting, we have to hear, take part in kirtan, we have to eat prasadam. Very, very important. Prabhupada said, prasadam is secret weapon in spreading Krishna consciousness. Sometimes people feel like giving up Krishna consciousness. And so at that time, Prabhupada would simply give them a gulab jamun. You know, people would come to Prabhupada and say, they say, Prabhupada, I think I want to go home. And Prabhupada would say, oh, really? Here, have one of these. He'd open his jar of gulab jamuns and he'd put a big juicy gulab jamun in the hand of the devotee and say, go ahead, eat it. And the devotee would eat it and he say, and the devotee would say, yeah, I'm not feeling so happy here. I think I want to go. And Prabhupada said, really? You want to go? G give him another gulab jamun. <coughs> so in this way, Prabhupada convinced him, or at least the Gulabjamans convinced him that he didn't want to leave Krishna consciousness. So prasadam, very powerful preaching tool. Therefore Prabhupada said every temple should have prasadam available for guests when they come. Very important. Illusory representation of completeness. We make efforts to utilize the resources of nature to create a so-called complete life of sense enjoyment. Illusory representation of completeness cannot fully satisfy us. So, what's the example? A, a good example in this case, we could say, just like a fish out of water. You may put the fish into a nice hotel room and you give it air conditioning and you give it alcohol and you give it cigars and you bring a beautiful woman and everything. Will the fish be happy? The fish will simply say, put me back in the sea. So the same way, 
you know, we're a bit like that. In many ways, our life of sense enjoyment is like that, the fish out of water. We're trying to utilize all the resources of nature, trying to make ourselves happy. Think, I have everything, I have money, I have my car, I have my home, I have my job, I have my friends, I'm having a great time. But there's something always missing. We have forgot something. It, it, there's always just that little something missing that we're not really satisfied. We don't get that full satisfaction. And we see there are many successful people who appear to be materially successful. They appear to be really doing well, but they're very unhappy. They're very dissatisfied because they're missing something which is very important in life. So they're trying to feel complete, but actually they're not complete at all. They've forgotten the most important thing. So this is just the illusion of being complete. And many people suffer like this. And these are the people who, are, who we need to give Krishna consciousness to, Krishna consciousness. They, they need that. They need us to come and guide them, show them, awaken them to Krishna consciousness, how they can actually feel complete. They want that. We're looking for satisfaction. We're trying to find it in the material world. We're always missing something. Prabhupada gives the example, he said, just like you write a check. But all you put is zeros, you know, five, six, eight zeros. You take it to the bank, you're not going to get anything. They'll laugh at you. But if you put a one in front of all the zeros, then it's very meaningful. So all these zeros, oh, I have money, that's one zero. I have a nice job, another zero. I have a lot of friends, another zero. I have, you know, I'm, I'm well educated, another zero, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm doing well, I, I can take care of myself, I'm doing well, another zero. Where's the one? The one is when we have that connection with Krishna, with the Supreme, with the Absolute Truth, with the complete whole. That is what makes us actually complete. Then we can feel real satisfaction. I don't know if you're familiar with this scene. This is uh, the cremation of a dead body, right? If you go to somewhere like Benares or any burning gut, every day people are dying. So many people are dying these days with these different di viruses, not only cancer but also now this corona virus. So we often see this scene, this scene. So we ask you, we want you to reflect on experiences of incompleteness in your life. I think we've all had some kind of experience of incompleteness where we just feel what is the purpose of life? Just like we say, there's a, there's a type of philosophy called uh, smasna vairagya, the renunciation of a person when they go to the crematorium or the burning gut. When we're there at the burning gut watching our friend's body be cremated, we don't feel very comfortable. We don't feel like enjoying. We feel very depressed. We think, what is life all about? We reflect on this. But once we get away from the crematorium, after a few hours or so, it's all forgotten about. And then go back to enjoying again. I'm asking you some reflection of experiences like this yourself
incompleteness in your life? Just take a few minutes to think and we would like to hear from you what kind of experiences of incompleteness you had. Is it clear, everyone? Yeah, yes, Maharaj. Okay, so I look forward to feedback from you in a couple of minutes. Okay, would someone like to contribute? Is someone there to offer their reflection? Narayan Prabhu, I haven't heard from you tonight. Can you contribute something? Uh, uh, Maharaj, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Um, I, I, the, the thing that uh, came to mind was, um, as I go on with uh, the daily activities, uh, uh, my daily activities, uh, there seem uh, not, I mean, that, that uh, the, does not seem to have any satisfaction. So even though uh, I I think I've accomplished something, but uh, still there's no satisfaction. So uh, sometimes I, I feel like, you know, um, where's the meaning to all this, Maharaj? Just in what, your ordinary daily life? Uh, yeah, yes, Maharaj. You didn't have any drastic experiences of incompleteness where where this this uh this, you know this question about the, this doubt about the purpose of life was really strengthened more on you and pressed more on you uh, yeah there's there's, uh, there's ones like um uh, where I could not, I mean, when I couldn't uh, get uh, admitted uh, to my uh, university, you know, for, for certain reasons, they, they did not admit me to the university, so I felt really uh, devastated at that time. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, yes, right. Yes, uh, definitely in education it can be like that. Yeah, we, we, we make great efforts, we want to, you know, really want something, expect to get something, some good result. Somehow we, we're just denied it. So certainly you have some feeling of incompleteness there. Very nice. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh -huh. What about Rukmini Pati? Rukmini Pati Prabhu, are you there? Yes, Maharaj, I'm here, Maharaj. I'll come back in a few minutes' time, Maharaj. I'm still thinking about it. Okay. Okay. Would someone else like to offer? Someone who maybe I, I, I'm not knowing everybody's name. Someone like to offer? Especially ladies who like to hear from you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. What about uh, unfairness and discrimination? I, I'm sorry, can you say that again? What about unfairness and discrimination? Well, can you give us the examples of the unfairness and discrimination? Please tell us what you're talking about. We want to know. Uh, it, can, it can be like, uh, 
it can be either in our workplace or in a place uh, in our university. Oh. Somebody else is more favored than us. Although we give our, uh, we put in our full effort, it's not being recognized. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. You put in your effort, but you're not recognized. Yeah, it can be like that. Yeah, you can feel so disappointed. Again, that's in the education field. Certainly. I, I know often in Malaysia there is that problem because you have different cultures there, different ethnic groups. Huh? Certainly ethnic groups, and we know that not everybody's equal there. It's not exactly a democratic country, you know? Although they say democrat democracy and the government and like, but we know there are special rights for the, you know, what they call the natives, the Bhumiputras, right? <laughs> it's a little different. Uh, so you can feel certainly different. These things are there everywhere though, you know, you go, you know, it, you, people may think, oh, in England people are all equal. What a joke, no way, you know, I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's, there's different people, some people, if they're, they get all the, the rights, they get all the opportunities, and the ordinary people are just working class, you know, there's the bourgeoisie and the proletariat, as they would say, bourgeoisie means the, the, the higher class, the upper class, the distinguished class, the wealthy class, and the proletariat means the working class. So the vast majority of people are working class, but you've got a small percentage of people who are the, the high class, and they get the facilities, they get the opportunities, and they're denied, often the, work, the working people, they're denied these opportunities. Okay, so that, that feeling of discrimination is there, feel incompleteness. Thank you. Anybody else like to offer something? Tell us about your experience or reflection on your incompleteness. Hare Krishna Prash. Yes, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, it's regarding the, the children who are our children. Uh, one from small, we try to give them good education. We expect expect them to be a, a what we work. But when they grow up, they will be in a different way, their way of living will be different, uh, it is beyond our... Death. But that one, that type of things will make us uh, sad, or the things that we see incomplete. Mm, okay, very good, yeah. A very difficult thing to bring up children in Krishna consciousness. Yeah, I've heard from many other parents also, the challenges of trying to bring their children up to be good devotees and to accept Krishna consciousness. It's not easy. Although we may do everything we can. And we see Srila Prabhupada's own example. Srila Prabhupada, of course, had three sons. And he would take them regularly when he would go to visit the temple. He would take them with him to Godiamat temple. But, no. Can you hear me okay? Yeah? Are you hearing all right? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, just because I'm a bit worried it's not so stable. Uh, Prabhupada would bring his children, and you know, but they, afterwards, you know, they didn't want to be devotees. They, they were not so interested. The youngest one, Vrindavan Day, was always friendly, favorable, you know, but you know, he, he wasn't like Prabhupada. He didn't want to take it up so seriously, you know. He, they have their own ideas. And so that's, that can also, we feel lacking, we feel incomplete, we've tried so hard to bring, to give them Krishna consciousness and somehow it doesn't work. You know, sometimes we're preaching to someone, we're trying to make them, to get them to be devotees, but you know, they don't want, they're not interested, they don't want to take it up. 
and you feel so helpless that you spend so much time, you put so much energy into them, trying to encourage them, give them association, preaching to them, giving them books, giving them prasadam, everything. And then, so, but no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be a devotee. <laughs> you just feel so helpless, so lacking. So like that, these feelings of incompleteness come in our life, definitely. Let's see what Prabhupada has to say about this. Oh. So, Prabhupada said, how can the invocation of Sri Upanishad help us make our lives complete? This is the application of this knowledge. We're feeling incomplete in our material experiences. How can we how can we apply this knowledge of the Ishopanishad to make our lives complete? Ram Gopinath, would you like to answer this? Ram Gopinath Prabhu, are you there? Uh, yeah, Maharaj. Yeah, do you think, can you offer? Something on this? How can we make our lives complete according to this invocation? Um, first thing, uh, if you power self, do you know knowledge, Maharaj? Yes. Well, we, certainly we have to have some knowledge, but we have to also uh, we have to also apply the knowledge, right? Yes, Maharaj. All right. There's we we we're getting the knowledge. Now we want to be able to apply it. So, so what are we going to do to make our lives complete? Follow the scriptures. Then, yes. Follow the previous acharyas. Okay, right. Concept of uh, previous acharyas. Uh huh. Yeah, we have to start connecting everything to Krishna, seeing everything in relation to Krishna. That Krishna is the cause of everything, everything is His, it's all come from Him and He's created everything. Everything is complete, our lives are complete but we have to be in Krishna consciousness. If we're not in that consciousness, then we will feel the incompleteness. The incompleteness is caused by incomplete knowledge of the Absolute Truth because we have not properly understood this knowledge. Therefore, we feel incomplete. Just like we're feeling incomplete, we're, we're identified with the body, we think, oh, they discriminated against me, or, you know, we identify with our material success. Oh, I didn't get in the college. Oh, my friend died. I lost my friend. We are identifying with the material circumstances. We have to see the, the spiritual nature. What the material situation, the material circumstances, we could say that's the arrangement of our karma, that we are put into these situations by our karma. We have to see that behind everything there's the plan of Krishna and we are simply his servants. So Krishna sometimes he puts us into difficulty, sometimes he's very kind to us and sometimes he appear, appears to be very hard to us. But he never gives us up. He's always with us. He's always helping us. We have to just depend on Him, look towards Him. Then our life becomes complete. So very important for us to understand this connection with Krishna. Prabhupada said, so long we are attached to Krishna, and then he gives this very nice example. Just like a big machine and there is a small screw 
The completeness of that small screw is to fit in the particular place. Then it has got value. And if it is out of touch of the machine, it has no value. <laughs> you can understand that a little screw. Sometimes you see this little screw and you think, oh, it, it doesn't cost hardly anything, you know, it's, it's only maybe five cents or something like that for some screw. But because that screw is not in the machine, the whole machine is not running properly. And as soon as you put the screw in, then the machine's, then it's perfect. But the screw, when it's out, that screw is useless, has no value. But when you put it in the machine, then very important. That machine is worth a lot of money. So the same way we put the screw into the machine, so the same way we have to be attached to Krishna. We're like that screw. We're tiny screws. We don't have much use. But when we connect to Krishna, Prabhupada said, we are complete units so long we are attached to Krishna. Otherwise, useless. <laughs> we are thinking, no, oh, I'm very good. I... <laughs> but actually we are useless without Krishna. So we want to keep that attachment to Krishna. How to be attached to Krishna? Chanting and taking prasadam, hearing about Krishna. Then we can remember Krishna. So this is how we can conquer, we can get over this feeling of incompleteness. Is it clear, everyone? This my lunch. So, we'll just have a look at what we presented here. Principles of the existence of Supreme on the basis of the statement, Om Purnam Ada. The principle of the existence of God on the basis of the statement, Om Purnam Ada. Om meaning? Om means the complete whole and Purnam complete, right? So the complete whole is perfect and complete. So we say that God is complete. What examples did Prabhupada give to prove us that God was complete? Anyone can remember an example? God is complete, Krishna is complete. Meaning? Explain. Okay, he is a body which is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. So, how does that relate to this Om Purnam Ada, that he's complete? Because uh, uh, he's complete, perfectly complete. Uh, what? So what? Everything, he is complete. Yes, yes, Maharaj. Can, Prabhupada gives a, a logical argument to establish how, Prabhu, how God is complete. He gives a logical mm -hmm. argument. Try to use the argument. Uh, uh, you, Ananda Vigraha and uh, mm -hmm. impersonal yeah. Brahman realization. But that's not. Realization. Prabhupada didn't present these things in this document. You're, ta uh -huh. you're taking this from some other place. You just just use the evidence which were which was given in the article, Prabhupada's lecture, 
Prabhupada's, uh, or Prabhupada's, art of, uh, Prabhupada's purport to the invocation. The, the material is there, or it's, been or it's been presented in our presentation. We quoted from Prabhupada's article. Prabhupada said, uh, everything within the existence of God is everything both within our existence and beyond it. We cannot be more than God. For example, somebody may say God has no form, but we have a form. So if God has no form, then it means we are greater than God. How can it be? Are we, we cannot be greater than God. He has no form. We have a form that we are greater than Him. No, He has a form, but His form is not like our form. He has a spiritual form. So like this, we understand that everything is there in the existence of the Supreme and whatever we see in this world, it has its origin from Him. In this way we understand the existence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That because we are persons, He also must be a person. He cannot be impersonal, but He can be both. He can be both a person and impersonal because He's everything within our existence and beyond it. We're a person. So God, He's a person also, but He can also be, at the same time, He can be impersonal, He can be both. That is His nature, that He's supreme. So in this way we understand Om Purnam Ada, that He is complete, that everything is there within Him. We cannot find anything which does not come from Him, which is not in Him. Everything is there within Him. He is complete. Is it clear? Not clear, huh? Hare Krishna? <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, it's clear Maharaj. It's, it's clear Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Okay. The nature of the spiritual potencies of the Supreme Person with reference to Purnam Eva Vashishyate. Nature of the spiritual potencies with reference to Purnam Eva Vashishyate. Purnam Eva Vashishyate, that even though so many complete units come from Him, He remains complete. He remains complete. So that is His spiritual potency. What is the spiritual arithmetic? Jolin, you can tell me the spiritual arithmetic? Minus one is still one. Yes. And? One plus one, plus one is one. One minus one is still one. And, and can you explain in relation to Krishna? Krishna plus everything is? Krishna. And, and Krishna minus everything? Is Krishna. Thank you. Yes. That's his spiritual potency. That he's always complete. Yes, Jolly? Just now you were saying that uh Prabhupada's check five six eight zero. But five six eight zero is still a valid number, isn't it? Oh I'm sorry, I meant zeros. Five zeros or eight zeros. Only zeros, no numbers, just zeros. Right? But, okay. I, right, uh, when I spoke of, I, I meant five digits of zero, or eight digits of zero, you know? 
but no number. So there's no number there. But when you put the one, then okay, we're happy. Ten thousand, one million, very nice. Okay, going ahead. The complete nature of the phenomenal world, with examples, with reference to Purnam Idam. Purnam Idam, that is complete. The complete nature. Who would like to give some examples? Who remembers some of the examples we gave about the phenomenal world, how it's complete? What about Radhika Mataji? So many names here, I don't know everybody. Vaishnava Kripa Prabhu. Responding Maharaj. <laughs> Krishna. Yes, who's this? I'm I cannot hear you. Speak a little louder, Mataji. Hare Krishna. It's just like that uh, child born where the mother will supply, automatically the milk will come. Yes, very good. Nice example. Yes. That's a nice example. Prasadam also, Maharaj, give example. Yes, the prasadam, we offer the food. If Krishna, is Krishna taking? And he remains. It remains, right? He's accepting, he's honoring, and it remains. We get his, his mercy as prasadam. Yes. Some more? Any others? How about the, yes, Maharaj, how about the clouds taking water from the ocean and giving back? Yes, okay. The salt waters in the ocean, we can't drink that, but the rain clouds come and they give rain water and we drink that. Yes, yes, Maharaj. Okay. The sun giving out the rain and the sun rays and the heat, uh, it remains as a whole, uh, never changes. I mean, quality. Yes, sun. In every universe, there's a sun. And there's so many universes, and every universe, there's a sun. Just think, who has created all of this? Somebody, somebody is saying they're God, some ordinary man comes along and people say, oh, he's God. He, he cannot create a son. Cannot cre God is so great, he can create so many sons, so many universes. Mm -hmm. What happened to my... Okay. Uh, okay, so very nice. You've got quite a few examples you've remembered about the complete nature. Then we reflected on experiences of feeling incomplete in our own lives. Yeah, we do feel incomplete often. What, and what's the cause of that incompleteness? Satisfaction. Huh? Why why are we dissatisfied? Because it's incomplete, because we are always frustrated. Yes. <laughs> but why are we frustrated? Why are we dissatisfied? What's wrong? We feel we feel it's not complete and we feel, you know, it's uh, a disappointment, that's all my life. I don't know what else to say. Because because we are not connecting ourselves with Krishna. Yes, oh, because okay. we're not connecting okay. ourselves with Krishna. <laughs> yeah. Because we're in the bodily concept of life. 
We're only thinking of the body, we've forgotten our real existence. This is a problem, right? Okay, personal application. What can we draw from the invocation which could help us to make our lives complete? What can we draw from that invocation which could help us to make our lives complete? We can understand the importance of Krishna consciousness, of being Krishna conscious, of seeing Krishna behind everything, understanding Him as the controller and the actual master and proprietor and the lord of everything, then we can make our life complete. And we should understand also that we are connected to Him, we are His part and parcel. We're like that tiny screw which has come out from the machine. We have to be connected. We have a relationship with Him, but we've become disconnected. The screw out of the machine is useless, but you put it in the machine, it's very valuable. Sometimes I would give the example myself, just like sometimes in the, in, the, in the hospital, sometimes they have to amputate someone's arm or leg. And once they amputate, it's just horrible, just disgusting. The doctor will say, oh, just get rid of it, get it out of here. But so long as it's attached to the body, it's very useful, very valuable. So the same way, we want to make our lives complete. We have to connect ourselves to Krishna. And this is Krishna consciousness. This is what we're learning from the Ishopanishad. The importance, first of all, being connected to Krishna. And then we'll see how we can connect ourselves to Krishna. Prabhupada says, in relation to com completeness, all services in this world, whether social, political, communal, international, or even interplanetary, will remain incomplete until they are dovetailed with the complete whole. So all services within the world. You th we find people, you know, they feel incomplete, so they take up welfare work and they do some social work or they take get into politics or they try to do work for the community and so on like that. But as I said, they will still they will still be incomplete until they're connected with the, the complete whole with Krishna. That is actual completeness. Okay, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Huh? Oh, okay, so we just finished on time here. So we'll go on tomorrow, text number one, a very important sloka. Please look over the text. If you have any questions, please prepare them for us tomorrow. All right. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hare Thank Krishna. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna.